Hello and welcome. Today I want to tackle Groom exports from Unreal Engine. It's a basic one today, but it is a common problem faced by anybody who uses Groom hair inside Unreal Engine. What I have here is a metahuman. It could be any character, but today we're using a metahuman. I have two pieces of hair. I have this scalp hair. And I have the main hairstyle, which is these long dreads. Now, these two pieces of groom hair here came without a root UV, which means you can't create a binding object. So if I go to it and I create a binding and I choose my metahuman's head and create, hit save. It will work to a certain extent, but when it comes to binding, it won't actually work. Let me show you that now. So inside my MetaHumans blueprint, if I click on hair, let's add our hair. Long back dreads, like so. I'm not going to position it because I shouldn't have to position it. I'm not going to attach it at the moment, and then we need... The binding here and as you can see it doesn't actually bind to the character there's a, a gap there now obviously we could connect it to the head socket and all of that but what we're going to do instead is we're going to export this hair from the engine we're going to modify it in Blender. If you're a Maya user, you will you obviously you use XGen, but I'm using Blender today for uh, the purposes of YouTube. And we will add a root UV and bind it to a metahuman character, re-import it back into the engine, and then we will be able to use it on any metahuman. So let's do that now. So what we have here in the Epic Marketplace, yep, you're going to have to buy a plugin, is the Groom Export plugin. Now, if you can code, this is pretty simple. You just obtain the hair strands from your Groom and you export via an Alembic file. You can write that using C++. This plugin, for example, I've had a peek at the code. It is as simple as I thought it would be, but obviously not everybody can code. So you will need this plugin. At $20, you think of the time it's going to save you. If you can afford it, just do it. Because I'm using Blender today, I'm going to need a Groom exporter. I will leave a link in the description for this too. Again, if you're using Blender and you want to export a Groom from Blender, this is what you need. This just works perfectly every single time. So none of these people are sponsoring me. I'm just telling you what I found. Just use this plugin. I think you can get this one for, well, it says euros here, but you could get it for maybe $2 or something. Just pay the developer. It is worth it. So let's begin. So I'm going to go to plugins. I'm going to type groom. And I want to enable the Alembic Groom Importer and our new plugin, Groom Export. Let's do that. And then hit restart and save. With the engine restarted, let's export our Groom hair. Let's start with the scalp hair. I'm going to right click, Asset Actions, Export. And now, because we have the plugin enabled, we get this Groom form UE8.alembic. So let's export this. I'm going to export it to my projects folder, but I'm going to create a new folder. I always do this and call it Source outside of my content folder. You see? And so. I'm going to keep the name the same, scalp hair. That's it. And then these dreads, I'm going to right click, 
asset actions export again as an alembic save and that's it obviously we're going to need a metahuman to bind our hair to so we're going to have to export our metahuman so i'm going to find our body and go to its folder here it is i'm going to right click asset actions export and i'm going to export it to my source folder and in this dialog we need to uncheck collision level of detail and morph targets because we don't need any of those i'm going to keep it at 2013 because we're exporting to blender and export Okay, then I need to export the face. So I'm going to go click on face, go to its folder. Here it is. And I'm going to repeat the process. Asset actions, export and export to my source folder. And when the dialog pops up, I want to make sure, particularly with the face, that morph targets are not selected because it will take ages to import. So there we go export and that's it let's jump over to blender a brand new project in blender i'm going to press a to select everything x to delete and then choose delete i now need to import my metahuman so i'm going to go to file import and fbx from my project folder i'm going to go into the source folder that i created I want to import both of these. So I'm going to select both of them over here. I'm going to uncheck animation and that's it. I'm not going to do anything else and import. I'm going to zoom in and look at my character. I want to get rid of the armature, etc. because we don't need it. We're not rigging. So I'm going to choose my body's mesh and in the viewport, Alt P clear and keep transformation. And then I'm going to go to my face mesh or we can select it in the viewport. I can't really see it at the minute. So here it is. And then back in the viewport, Alt P, clear and keep transformation. OK. So now we can delete the null and the armature. Clear the armature and do the same for the face mesh. Clear the armature and the null. And then that just leaves us with a mesh. Next, for the head, I'm going to select the head, hit tab to go into edit mode. Make sure everything is deselected by clicking off. Then I'm going to go back over the head and I'm going to click L. This selects just the head. Then H to hide. And as you can see, this has left us with our eyelashes, eyes, mouth, everything. OK, I'm going to click A to select all that and P and choose selection. This will separate those into a separate mesh, which I'm then going to hide. I'll call it eyes so we know eyes, mouth. OK. And then back in the viewport, I'm going to click Alt H and it returns our head. And it's just an empty head. Look, you can see through the eye sockets, etc. That's it. Next, I want to select my head. Make sure it has all the materials in place. It does. And same for the body. Yes, it does. For the head, we can click here and remove unused slots and it'll leave us just with one material. Next, we need to import our hair. I'm going to create a new collection and go to import ABC. Go to my folder. First, let's import the scalp hair. 
I'm not going to adjust the scale because I found it doesn't work. So I'm going to leave the scale exactly where it is and import. Look, it's absolutely huge. No problem. We'll click here. And what I want to do is on rotation on the X axis minus 90 and on the Z axis 180. Then in scale, we want to do 0 0.01 for X, Y and Z. That's it. Now, if we zoom in, the hair is there or thereabouts. And what I want to do is just fine tune this now. So I'm going to put it into place like this. And probably there we can do G and whatever axis you want to move on. So I'll probably there. And then maybe grab Z and just pull it up slightly. At any point, you can hit S to scale if you like. As you can see, it's not quite touching the mesh, but that's fine. Okay. So when you are happy with where your mesh is, I'm not entirely happy with that. Let me just try it one more time. Grab Z just slightly down. Yeah. Okay. So when you're happy with the mesh, you can then go up to object, transform. Sorry, apply. And apply all transforms. And you see, it sets them all back to zero here. And now this is the size of your curves. OK, I keep calling it a mesh. It's not a mesh, it's curves. Now it's time to import our dreads. So import Alembic. Choose my dreads. Again, I'm not adjusting the scale. And we get this monster here. I'm going to set the X axis rotation to 90. Sorry, minus 90, that should be. And 180. So let's do the scale again. Dot zero one. Dot zero one. And dot zero one again i'm going to zoom in and get it into place the best i can g and z to pull it down on the z axis okay from the side that's actually not that bad grab y just slightly maybe there we go Yep, I think that's fine. OK. And why is that named that one moment? Let's just name this one. I want to keep these zero and one. Uh, I'll explain that in a while. OK, so that's it so far. This is what we have. I want to apply the transforms again for our dreads. So apply all transforms. And as you can see, it's all zero now. OK, so that's it. That's what we have so far. OK, I'm going to turn off the dreads for now so I can see my scalp. I'm going to select the scalp and kind of come up to object. Convert and convert to curves here and Blender's new hair system. Let's do that. There we go. We now have curves. The first thing to do is bind this to our metahuman, or if you're not using a metahuman, bind it to your character's head. So I'll come up to object, sculpt mode here. If I come over here to the data properties of our hair, for surface, 
we want to choose our metahuman's head. And for the UV map, diffuse UV. Okay. And then I can come up to curves. In fact, let's go around. Before I do that, let's go around to the back where it's not it's not binding to our character look here. But if I come to curves and snap to nearest surface, boom. The scalp hair is now attached to our metahuman. Right, let's go back to object mode. And turn on our dreads. The first thing we need to do is select the dreads, go to object and convert to curves. There we go. Perfect. Then we need to go to sculpt mode again. We need to choose our metahuman's head and the UV map and then go to curves, snap to nearest surface. And this is what we get. Go back to object mode and it's time to export. We need to make sure that in preferences, add-ons that we have our groom hair exporter that we got from Gumroad enabled. I'm assuming at this point you know how to install add-ons by clicking this button here and you install the add-on you've downloaded. Let's export color by clicking this plus icon and adding color and then we'll do the same for the dreads. So in the data properties panel Click the plus icon and color and then we can come over here to groom and we can drag this out and I'm going to scroll down and we're going to be exporting down the bottom here. So what we would need to do though is select both of our grooms zero and one. Now the reason I left them as zero and one I found that when you do this it creates the groups correctly when you re-import into the engine. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It just means the hair is going to come back into the engine, hopefully as one piece. For the root UV, we're going to scroll down and choose surface UV coordinate. And make sure it has done it for one. It has. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. All right, let's try this. Scroll down, UV coordinate for color. We'll choose color and width, radius, and do the same for number one. Make sure the surface UV coordinate is selected and color and radius for width. Select both our grooms like so and hit the export button. And I'm going to save it to my folder and we will call this fixed dreads and export. And that's it. That will take a little while depending on how heavy your hair is. Right, back inside the engine, let's just get rid of our groomer that was using in the example. And I'm going to go to Tut Hair and I'm going to right click and import and go to my source folder and go to fixed dreads here. Open. If you look, I get valid, valid, root, UV. That's very important for binding and color. Okay, I'm going to make no changes here because it should just bind straight to our character. I should import correctly. So I import. Let me do a save all in case we get a crash. If I open up that, here it is. The two pieces of the hair are now one. Okay. So, but if you look here, they are separated into two different 
groups. So we can individually control each of those because they're in separate groups. Next, we need to create a binding object. You need to know the name of your metahuman's head. In this case, Ada, tall, normal way, base. This is only really important if you have more than one metahuman in your project. So what we need to do is go to our fixed threads, create binding. And it's going to ask us for a skeletal mesh for the target. And as you can see, again, root UV true. This is very important. And I'm going to select our MetaHuman's head and click Create. And when the dialog pops up, if you did have uh, uh, another MetaHuman or you wanted to use this with a MetaHuman, you would put Ada here. Okay, in the source. And then you would choose your MetaHuman here. We'll do that anyway and click Save. And then I'm going to do another Save All just in case we have a crash. This is unreal after all. And then I'm going to open up my MetaHuman's blueprint. Zoom in and choose the hair. I'm going to choose my fixed dreads. And it already, look, it's in the correct position. I will choose my binding object, fixed dreads, binding object. And we just make sure the attachment name here is facial C facial root. I forgot to assign a hair material in my original tutorial. So you can just use the one that came with your metahuman and then make some adjustments to it uh, to obtain the result that you want. In this case, I will, I want the hair to be really dark, but have a red tinge to it. And whenever I do that, I decrease the hair's roughness to maybe there. And then here we go. We have really dark hair now. And so this is what we're left with. Again, I will probably go back and fix the scalp, but that's it. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the thanks button underneath this video. Alternatively, head over to buymeacoffee.com and support me that way. If you found this tutorial helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.